Howdy everyone, and today I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm taking a look at Lomography's latest camera, the Lomo Instant Wide. This should be pretty fun. It's an instant film camera which gives you shots like this, but it's specifically designed to give you quite a few more creative options than your typical Polaroid point and shoot, so this piece of kit could be interesting to those more seriously into their photography who still want to have some fun. This camera is the follow-up to Lomography's original Lomo Instant Camera, which raised well over a million dollars as a Kickstarter project. This new version of the camera uses Fujifilm's Instax Wide Film, which is a lot larger than their normal film, meaning that you can now get rather more detailed pictures, which are twice as big. The film comes in packs of 10 exposures, and each exposure costs about a dollar, or about 70 pence, so obviously it's not cheap. The camera itself will cost about £200, so that's a bit of an investment, but it comes with a number of fun lenses and attachments which have some promise. I'd like to thank Lomography UK for lending me one of these cameras to test out for a few days, but I can reassure you that this video is not sponsored by them in any way. So with the camera, the first thing you'll notice, apart from the very nice packaging, is that it's a pretty hefty size and with four AA batteries and a pack of film inside it, it weighs about 800 grams, or one and a half pounds. The camera's large size is necessitated by the wider format film it uses, but still, it's a bit to take with you. The camera is built of good quality plastics, with softer panelling on the front and rear. This particular camera is black, although it's due to come out in a number of different colours. There's a little mirror on the front for selfie action, and the shutter button protrudes next to it, clicking when you press down. Loading your film is dead simple. Just push it into the back of the camera with the yellow label matched up, and close it up again. Your first shot will release a protective card, and then you're onto your 10 exposures. Use them well. The controls at the back are dead simple. There's the flash on and off button, takes a few moments to charge. Next, the multiple exposure button. A really cool feature is this camera lets you take infinite exposures on one piece of film. The camera comes with a special lens cap that lets you block part of your image to certain levels, as you can see here. And you can do all the other typical multiple exposure experiments that are so popular. Here's a multiple exposure taken with different colour flash filters. The camera will take multiple exposures while you've turned that mode on. As soon as you turn it off again, your print will be ejected from the camera. Below this, there's an exposure compensation switch to help out when you're shooting particularly light or dark subjects. Give it an extra stop for light subjects, and lose a stop for dark. Then, the power switch and mode button. Here, it's turned off. Now, we're in auto exposure, or point and shoot mode. Now we're in bulb mode, another neat feature. You can hold open the shutter as long as you like for some long exposure photography, or shooting in the dark. Best to make use of the camera's tripod mount for that sort of work. And finally, there's an option to keep your shutter at 1 30th of a second. That's for people who want to take the step of shooting in a studio with an external flash using a PC sync connection. Something I really like is that, as you can see, the camera comes with a special lens kit, an ultra-wide angle attachment, the equivalent of 21mm, which will be fun for landscape pictures and selfies. Its main disadvantage is that it shows quite a lot of barrel distortion, but it can focus a bit closer than a standard lens, as close as 30cm. If you want to get even closer than that though, the camera does come with a special macro lens attachment, which focuses at 10cm for some creative, close-up photography. The ultra-wide angle lens has its own optical viewfinder that you can put in place in the camera to help you to compose your shot, but with the macro lens, you'll have to get your subject lined up yourself. The viewfinder is a distance away from the lens, so when you are shooting close-up pictures, you'll have to remember to line up your subject in front of the lens, otherwise, well, you'll make mistakes. Shooting with the Lomo Instant Wide does take a little practice, just like with any other rangefinder style camera. The native lens that's fitted to the camera is a 35mm equivalent f8 lens, with a simple focus ring. 
F8 is a bit of a dark maximum aperture, of course, but Fuji Instax film is rated at 800 ISO, so the aperture is not really a problem. The camera comes with a few more neat bits and bobs. The lens cap also houses a remote control, with an option to take a timed picture or a picture right away. I think that's a pretty cool feature. You also get some different coloured filters for the internal flash, letting you get some more fun effects. You also get this, a whole box of cards with plenty of photos with ideas to stimulate your imagination, with helpful descriptions at the back. There seem to be a lot of hipsters in those pictures, which is appropriate, because I think this is probably the ultimate hipster camera, and I do mean that in a kind way. The camera is creative and fun, and I like the larger film format it uses, as I think that makes the picture quality a lot more usable. The disadvantages of the Lomo Instant Wide are obvious. It's a very big camera that's a little pricey, and shooting on Instax film is a pretty expensive hobby to say the least, especially when we're all so used to digital photography now. But I had a seriously fun few days with the Lomo Instant Wide, because shooting with this camera is an innately tactile experience that those of us less familiar with Polaroid could really appreciate. The quality of those physical film exposures is actually very nice, with the punchy colours and fine grain that Fuji's film was always famous for. And shooting with this camera is obviously a totally different skill from digital shooting. There's an element of guesswork to this experience, a new challenge that's as enjoyable as it is tangible. I like the camera itself, because it's simple and it works well in every way, but its creative features make it quite flexible, and I like the results it mechanically churns out at you. This kind of photography is a fundamentally enjoyable and more sociable experience. If you can stomach the unfortunate expense of those film exposures, then the Lomo Instant Wide will undoubtedly give you plenty of enjoyment and scope for your imagination. It's as simple as that.